Welcome to St. Peter and Zion Lutheran Churches. Today we celebrate the fifth Sunday in Lent. The Old Testament reading for this, the fifth Sunday in Lent, is from Jeremiah chapter 31. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. Not like the covenant that I made with their fathers on the day when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, my covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, declares the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, declares the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God. They shall be my people, and no longer shall each one teach his neighbor, and each his brother, saying, Know the Lord. For they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. For I'll forgive their iniquity, and I'll remember their sin no more. This is the word of the Lord. Our epistle comes from us from Hebrews chapter 5. Every high priest chosen from among men is appointed to act on behalf of men in relation to God, to offer gifts and sacrifices for sin. He could deal gently with the ignorant and wayward, since he himself is beset with weakness. Because of this, he is obligated to offer sacrifice for his own sins, just as he does for those of the people. And no one takes this honor for himself, but only when called by God, just as Aaron was. So also Christ did not exalt himself to be made a high priest, but was appointed by him who said to him, You are my son, today I have begotten. As he says also in another place, You are a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to him who was also able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation to all who obey him. Being designated by God a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 10th chapter. And James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came up to Jesus and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What do you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left, in your glory. Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink? or to be baptized with the baptism with which I am baptized. And they said to him, We are able. And Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink you will drink. And with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it was prepared. And with the ten heard it, they began to be indignant at James and John. Jesus called them to him and said to them, You know that those who are considered rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great ones exercise authority over them. But it shall not be so among you. But whoever would be great among you must be your servant. And whoever would be first among you must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. This is the gospel of our Lord. Let us pray. Almighty God, by your great goodness, mercifully look upon your people, that we may be governed and preserved evermore in body and soul. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father, and our Lord and Savior, 
Jesus Christ. We all have our favorite ways of referring to Jesus. We often describe the Son of Man by using titles that are both comfortable and comforting. Jesus is our Savior and our Redeemer. Jesus is our Lord and our God. Jesus is our brother and our friend, our great physician and good shepherd. Each of these titles highlights a different dimension of our Savior's service and sacrifice for sinners. But it is far less frequent for us to describe Jesus as our priest. And that's unfortunate. Today's epistle, the author of Hebrews sets us straight concerning the priestly service of our Savior. He highlights how Jesus is our perfect high priest. In fact, he binds this priestly moniker for all it's worth in, in the process. Delivers all the comfort and confidence that comes to us from the Christ. Today we ponder the priest of Jesus beneath this theme. What a priest we have in Jesus. The author of Hebrews helpfully provides some history concerning the high priesthood. Priestly service was part and parcel of the Lord's design for the life of his Old Testament people. He specifically selected the sons of Aaron to provide this priestly service for his people. They served on behalf of their fellow Israelites regularly offering gifts and sacrifices to God, both for the sins of the people and for their own sin. God himself appointed them for priestly service. Because the priesthood was reserved for those who were chosen by God, the author of Hebrews tells us that Jesus, too, was appointed to priestly service. Jesus' priestly appointment was made public in a big way at his baptism. There Jesus was anointed with the Holy Spirit and set apart to serve as our great high priest. There God declared, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. God appointed Jesus as our great high priest so that he could serve us and help us. Jesus is immensely qualified to do this because he is one of us, bone of our bone and flesh of our flesh, a human man among men, as one of us, Jesus knows. He knows our weaknesses and our frailties. In the passage immediately preceding today's text, the author of Hebrews spells out the comfort we have in Jesus as our high priest. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are yet without sin. Jesus willingly accepted our human weaknesses to suffer temptations, hunger, fatigue, sadness, loneliness, rejection, and persecution. Because Jesus knows our every weaknesses, he deals gently with those under his care who are ignorant and wayward. That's us, by the way, ignorant and wayward. Unlike Jesus, we are not without sin. Temptations tangle us up. Sin cling closely to us along every step of the way. We have a habit of straying from our Lord's plans and purposes. We deviate from his desires, always seeking to serve ourselves rather than those around us. We can see both our sin and the amazing gentleness of Jesus in today's gospel. Imagine it. Near Jerusalem, Jesus had just predicted his death and resurrection. This makes at least three times that Jesus told the disciples he would suffer and die. But rather than pray and prepare for the Lord's passion, James and John hatched their own play. They were looking for ways to get ahead. They came to Jesus seeking to sit in glory, longing to get a leg up on the competition climbing all the way over their fellow disciples and the man dash to the top of the heap. No matter who they had to step on in the process. When the ten heard about this power play, they were indignant, angry, ready to retaliate against this brazen audacity of James and John. As Jesus 
made his way to Calvary. A civil war was about to erupt among his disciples. It was more than enough reason to indict the anger and the wrath of the rabbi from Nazareth. But the rabbi's wrath was not kindled. As a priest, Jesus dealt gently with his wayward disciples. He neither condemned nor condoned their sin. He did not excuse their conduct, but he set them straight with measured priestly sympathy. He corrected them lovingly and patiently. It should not be so among you, he said. He reminded them of his priestly purpose. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Because Jesus is our great high priest, we have this comfort for ourselves. He deals gently with us. He knows our sins. He knows our ignorance. He knows our weaknesses. He knows our struggles and our sufferings. And Jesus knows these things about us not merely as facts, knowledge, or data. He knows it as if it was happening to him. He feels for us and suffers with us precisely because he is a human being, like us in every way, yet without sin. Not only does our great high priest know and feel our weaknesses. But he alone can do something about it. He alone will offer his life as a ransom for us all. What a priest we have, Jesus. One of the biggest surprises concerning our Savior's priestly service is that it was a learning process for him. In fact, we could say that Jesus learned to be a priest to harm through the school of suffering. According to our text, although Jesus was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. As a priest, Jesus was a learner like us. Our Savior was a student in the school of suffering, a divine disciple who learned obedience alongside his human brothers and sisters. Although he is God, he could always know everything. Jesus never used his omnipotence when it would just serve himself. He didn't cut corners. He didn't cheat. He didn't jump to the front of the law. Rather, Jesus reverently and prayerfully learned obedience through what he suffered. When he was the last time you tried to learn something new and difficult, perhaps you downloaded an app to help you learn a new language. Perhaps you watched hours of YouTube videos to learn for yourself how to do a major home improvement project. Perhaps you download a complicated recipe that you might saute your way to success with a new culinary creation in the kitchen. Whatever you have attempted to learn, how did it go for you? Were you ultimately successful? Or did you bite off more than you could chew? Perhaps what you actually learned was that difficult work is sometimes best left to the experts. Jesus learned to be a priest in the most difficult way imagined. He learned through what he suffered. Tears would be his teacher. Pain would be his preceptor. Neither nails nor thorns would deter him from learning to be a perfect priest. No pain, no gain. Where others would falter and fail, Jesus pressed on. Today's text alludes to the Garden of Gethsemane. There Jesus prayed as our perfect priest. There he offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Those perfect priestly prayers continue even as Jesus suffered for our salvation on the cross. Father, forgive me. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Father, into your hands, I commit my spirit. Those perfect prayers were the expression of our Lord's perfect obedience to his Father. Through the school of suffering, Jesus became the source of eternal salvation to all who obey him. Only this reverent priest, Jesus, has secured our salvation. What he suffered was on account of our sin. The pain he endured was a penalty meant for us. The death he died was a necessary ransom to redeem a world of sinful, 
wayward reverence. Because of his reverence, his perfect prayerful obedience, the Father raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in glory. For Jesus continues to intercede for us as our great high priest. Our salvation is found in no one else, but a priest we have in Jesus. There is one final surprise concerning the priestly work of Jesus. He invites us to share in his priestly work. We are also his priests, priests of the perfect priest, called to present our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. As God's baptized and holy people, we have priestly prayers to offer, priestly service to render to those around us. As priests of the perfect priest, we are perennial students in the school of suffering, following in the footsteps of our great high priest. When we seek to be served, we sin. When our prayers for others falter, we sin. But our Lord's perfect priestly service counts for us. His obedience counts for us. He invites us to learn obedience as we follow him. He promises to perfect our lives through his perfect forgiveness and love. He is indeed the source of our eternal salvation. In the name of Christ Jesus, amen. The peace of God just pass on understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the gift of the Holy Spirit. That our Heavenly Father would write his word on our hearts and lead us to know him as a God who forgives our iniquities and remembers our sins no more. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Matthew, our synod president, Justin, our district president, Chris, our circuit visitor, and our pastors, who, like all flesh, are beset with weakness, that they may deal gently with us and be preserved faithful to proclaim God's word. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy, for humility, that after the example of Christ, we are not Lord authority over one another, but serve each other in our homes, communities, and congregations. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy for all earthly authorities, that they may be guarded from the temptation to wield such power and property, and be committed instead to good and faithful service. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy for all who walk the way of the cross among us, that as Christ learned obedience through his suffering, they also may be instructed in his ways, sustained by his blessings and in his time, receive relief from his Father, hand. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Hear us, Heavenly Father, for the sake of Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, the Holy Spirit. What God, now and forever. Amen. Thank you for joining us today.